Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Martin from the University of Hamburg. We use OpenCast as our post processing engine for our media portal lecture to go. Uh, thank you very much, uh, community. Thank you very much. For a long time, at least since the Matterhorn Summit in Oxford in 2012, we were look looking for free subtitling solution uh, based on automatic speech recognition, of course. Our Department of Computer Science uh, has been working on this for some time, and we funded a special project for one year with a significant amount. While I see some parallels with WASC, nevertheless, uh, maybe we can finally give something back to the community. Uh, ben will give you a brief overview of Subtitle to Go. Uh, let's go, Ben. Hi, thanks for the introduction, Martin. I hope everybody can hear me and you can uh, see my screen. Um, so there's probably a lot of overlap with uh, the last ta talk. So what we did is basically uh, build an automatic subtitling solution um, that works on any video file. So this is not yet a part of OpenCast. Um, but I think there are a couple of differences and a couple of things uh, we added to the whole system. Um, it could also be useful for this other solution. Um, so, uh, like the other solution, we can generate standard uh, VTT or SRT files. Um, our application is a Python application, and um, it also uses Kali. Well, we use Kali through PyKali. So that's basically a Python binding for Kali, which is this industry and research standard toolkit for ASR, and there are also lots of models available so in theory, all these other models you've seen from the last talk, they should also work in subtitle to go. Um, but then you need some kind of other models, and I, I go into that in a minute, uh, for the other steps as well. But they should be significantly easier than the speech recognition part. Um, yeah, I'm also a maintainer of PyCali, so that's why I use it. Um, the solution is currently for German. Uh, we have an upcoming release for English as well. We're uh, also going to train a very big and uh, high-quality English model. Um, so since a couple of years, uh, six, seven years ago, I started this project. Um, I'm building ASR models for German with all the open source audio that I can find. So over the years, I've added data, um, and we are now at about 1,000 hours of aligned speech data. And we are running a, a new training now with 1,600 hours of speech data. So that allows you to uh, already train very high quality ASR models for German. Uh, we are using uh, hybrid TDN and HMM, so that's the standard Kali thing basically nowadays. It's deep learning uh, combined with statistical modeling. Uh, we also gathered and crawled a lot uh, of uh, text sentences, but you also need to train these models. We um, extended our own lexicon, so we added 14,000 uh, lexicon entries mainly uh, for uh, uh, English words in German, so uh, a lot of recent words as well that we added. And um, this is um, something that you can also extend. That's the nice thing. Uh, you can also add your custom vocabulary. So uh, it's kind of nice to have your own model um, for uh, subtitling, uh, especially for lectures. Now, how good is it? Um, so uh, our current best word error rate, um, but that is for lower and uppercase. So our model is capable of um, producing text uh, with lower and uppercase. And we are measuring also um, like lower and upper cases mistakes if the model makes mistakes. So that's 11.8. And it's actually better than the German Google Speech API in 2019. So there's a colleague from uh, Stuttgart who did a test in 2019. And uh, word error rate was 12.4. So lower is better for word error rates. Um, and like to give you a rough estimate, um, like if you have clean speech, um, that means that like every like nine out of 10 words are correct, basically. Um, I have all the links uh, at the last slide as well. We also have a paper on this open source speech recognition. Uh, we continuously uh, upload new models to this Git as well. Um, now, if you just do ASR, that's, uh, in my opinion, uh, not everything you need for uh, automatic subtitling. Uh, in order for this to be very useful and uh, to have a nice read flow, um, you want to have punctuation as well. Uh, and you want to nicely segment uh, your subtitles. So you, you, you want to segment in nice places so that you can read uh, the subtitles in nice chunks. 
So we have solutions for these two other processing steps as well. Um, yeah, so we, we uh, have word level alignments that we also get out of the decoder, so we know when which word is spoken. Uh, so uh, that is also something we can use for segmentation. Uh, we extract the audio, it can be any audio file, we then use PyCali. For punctuation, we train our own uh, punctuation reconstruction models. So basically, you train a, a neural net model uh, with lots of text, you remove the punctuation, you also remove any clues uh, that might uh, make uh, it easy for the model to discover that there was a punctuation there. Um, of course, the numbers, etc. you want to match the output of the ESR as uh, much as possible. And then you try to um, predict all the punctuation back. Uh, so we, we did that for uh, point and uh, comma and uh, exclamation mark. You could also extend that, of course, to other punctuation. Um, now we have a huge blob of ASR text with punctuation, that's nice. Um, but this segmentation can't be in random places. And kind of our intuition for that is that you don't want to segment uh, between linguistically close words. So in this example, we have the Nazi, a determiner, and a noun, and we definitely don't want to split here because that would hamper the reading flow. And the second iteration, and that's why I think also punctuation is very important in automatic, subti si uh, automatic subtitling, um, punctuation is also very nice for splitting. So if you split uh, commas and uh, dots, etc., uh, it's, it's kind of nice to do. So the full algorithm for uh, segmentation is a search algorithm, and you can, all, you can change all the parameters. So how long should my sentences on average be, how important it is for them uh, to, be, to be very close to the average, uh, you could add uh, further constraints, like I have a maximum number of characters that I want to display, etc. Um, now, uh, this is not part of subtitle to go This is actually part of uh, lecture to go so the online platform for videos, for lecture videos at uh, University of Hamburg. And um, it includes this uh, automatic subtitling feature, so anybody uploading uh, can, uh, at least in German for the moment, um, generate these automatic subtitles. But then you can also edit them, uh, which I think is very important because then you can remove all these mistakes. You use the ASR output um, as, as a sort of starting point, and then you generate the final subtitles by hand. Um, the nice thing about this is if people do that, and if they do that a lot, we're going to have lots more training data. And then they can uh, train these ASR models again, uh, but with the lectures that we have. Um, I attempt to stream this video, so I'm not sure if that's going to work through uh, BBB. If not, I have a backup video link here as well. You can copy the link with, uh, if you press plus, you can simply add uh, the player for external video player. Uh, I have the plus where? I, I can also just uh, try to, to uh, play the video. And I'm, I'm sharing the screen. I'm holding my microphone so close to you. It works. If you do screen sharing, it does not work with audio. If okay, you know, let's, let's try. There, let's try. Press mm -hmm. the plus and then share external video. Okay. Yeah. Here. Okay. Just... Okay. Uh, I try. We can see the video and you can now control this for everyone. Aber die Hochschule ist kein Schonraum, kein Spielplatz, was sie eben von der lebensgeschichtlich weit früher liegenden Bildungsstätte des Kindergartens unterscheidet. Wer als Professor oder als Student glaubt, verhindern zu müssen, dass unorthodoxe wissenschaftliche Thesen zu Wort kommen, wer Das gibt es tatsächlich. tödlichen Gift wie der fundamentalistische blinde Mann. Okay, so that um, was basically what uh, the system outputs without any corrections. Uh, at the moment, you see some a uh, couple of mistakes which you could easily uh, correct. Um, let me get back to um, the uh, slides.
Um, so uh, in conclusion, we also haven't mentioned that um, this open source, um, th this solution is also fully open source. Uh, so all the models are, are also there. And uh, installation instructions. You have well. to re-enable the screen sharing, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just one slide, but uh, yeah. Let me share my screen again. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, um, it's fully open source, uh, full privacy, because you can uh, install this on your own computers and run it yourself, like the last solution as well. And um, after you've uh, run the installation instructions, um, uh, generating the subtitles is as easy as running Python 3, subtitle to go, and then your media file. Um, it's also quite fast. So uh, with the standard settings, uh, you get a real-time factor of 1.2 uh, on a like five or six year old uh, server CPU. So uh, we have 90 minutes subtitled in 18 minutes and um, that's basically uh, after uh, a lecture period, you can directly upload this and before the next one starts, you would already have these subtitles. Uh, on, on more modern PCs, it's, it's faster and you can all, uh, of course uh, use multiple cores to uh, generate multiple subtitles in parallel. Uh, we obtain good uh, uh, results with most videos, of course, if uh, there's background noise, recording quality, etc., accents as well are problematic, uh, then uh, it's not as nice as in this Steinmeier uh, video example that you've seen. Um, we still think that this is a good basis for also for automatic subtitling in OpenCast. Uh, so maybe uh, combined with the other project, um, because we have segmentation as well and punctuation and low and uppercase for German. So um, with that, please get in touch if you want to collaborate and help. Um, I have uh, our emails here uh, on the lower left. And it's time for questions. And we have three questions already in the shared notes. Um, the first question is, will you submit a notecast module for the integration of subtitle to go um, I think no plans yet. That's why we are here. So um, we hope that someone else would collaborate on this and would help to get this into OpenCast. Um, maybe Martin, you want to say two, three words about this as well? Well, no, no we have uh, no resources to, to support OpenCast directly. So uh, we need support from the community in this point. So we, we put our effort in the optimization of the speech model, et cetera. So from my point of view, we might have a look at this um, as we have an accessibility project at the moment. And to me, um, the advantages on interpunctuation and uh, uppercase, lowercase uh, seem quite interesting to improve on this, especially as Technology-wise, we are probably quite uh, s similar here that uh, adopting might be an option. But we have to check. But I come back to you, Benjamin. Okay. Okay, second question. Um, and that is more about Electric Duck to go, I think. Uh, and that's the question, can anybody edit the subtitles in the editor? And if yes, uh, is there some process in place to prevent misuse? Um, and what happens if uh, several people uh, edit this and uh, suggest something? Okay, so for, for the moment, it's only uh, the uploader that um, can correct the subtitles. And the subtitle editor is part of this um, other GitHub project, uh, Lecture to Go. So it's part of the platform, basically. It's not part of Subtitle to Go. Um, I hope, I mean, this answers the question. I think it does. Um, next one, um, can you do this on live content? So basically live stream to subtitle go and get an instant response. Um, not directly with subtitle to go. What we have another project for live subtitling. We actually made a plugin for BBB and I can uh, post a link in the chat. So um, that is something that does live uh, subtitling for German and English, uh, but without punctuation at the moment. So that's the only caveat. Um, yeah, I, I like. I can also do that now. Maybe um, I will post the link. Yeah, that would be great. It's it's called BBB uh, Live Subtitles. Ah, thanks, uh, Robert. Already, uh, a colleague of mine already posted the link in the chat. Thank you, Robert. 
Okay, next question, and uh, that is, is it in any way possible to integrate this in VOSC? I um, don't quite know which, which direction this goes in, into the VOSC module and Opencast could be either way, or uh, to use the models for VOSC. So, um, I haven't tried out VOSC, to be honest, yet, so I probably have to. Um, from what I've seen from the page uh, and from the last talk, uh, it's basically using the same kind of model. So the model itself should be compatible. Um, so maybe uh, this, this model also comes from our project, I'm not sure, because we were one of the first to actually build open source models for German, for Caldi as well. Um, but then you also have the punctuation uh, reconstruction and the segmentation, and that's um, basically something that is extra. So it's some Python scripts which are there. Um, so you would need to have someone that somehow combines these two projects, I guess. Okay, I spare you the next question. Uh, if you write a script around that, uh, it should be possible to uh, use execute one spot for operation handle to call this. Uh, you probably need some glue code or some glue script to do that um, because I, I think you are not an open cluster developer, so you don't really you could answer that. And then the last question, really quick, um, and that is if editing subtitles is actually uh, uh, used very often. Uh, Martin, do you have any stats on how often this is being used? It's a, it's a very recent I, I, I think we don't have enough experience to answer this question. So okay. it's pretty new for us. Uh, it's uh, integrated since a few months and no, we don't have experience. We don't have data. Okay, then thank you very much for your talk. Uh, we are a minute over time, but I think that's, that's okay. Uh, we got a lot of input and I think yeah, it might make a lot of sense for cooperation here between uh, Opencast and Subtitle2Go. So